What's up YouTube, my name is Domino, and this weekend in the Digimon TCG Mesquite Regionals, I got 16th place and earned my invite to Nationals. I did it with my good old friend Agumon, but I also had to use the power of friendship. Today, I'm gonna tell you the story of the day, and I'm gonna show you the list that got me there. Hey everyone, thanks so much for checking out the video. Before we get started, if, if you're just here for the deck profile, um, check out the timestamps below. I'll timestamp everything in the video. As I said, my name is Domino. If you like anything Pokemon related, you should check out our current series going on. We have a Pokemon Y randomizer happening. You should check it out. Subscribe if you like it or if you want to hear more Digimon stuff. As I said, this weekend I got top 16 at the Mesquite Regionals and finally earned my invite to Nationals. It's actually the first time I've earned my invite outside of the Last Chance Qualifiers a couple years ago. Now, to get started, obviously the title, you can tell what deck we use, but I have a story. Again, you should skip ahead if you don't want to hear the story. Just a couple minutes. Check out the, the timestamps below. This placement was really important to me because I haven't, let, let's be honest, I haven't done anything. I haven't had any good placements since I got top 32 at Nationals a couple years ago. Since then, I've let my pride tell me that I can keep just using Agumon. I can keep just using War Greymon. I can use Black War Greymon. And just a couple weeks ago, I used Agubond. And I was X3 halfway through the day and spent the rest of the day just sitting around. So going into this event, I knew that I wanted to put a better foot forward. I wanted to prove to myself that I was as good as I think I was, or as I think I am. Um, so I decided to pick a list that had won. Uh, a list that had topped recently and just pilot it and see if I could win. So there were three decks on my radar, three decks that I was choosing from. First was Leviah X. And it was, it, it was good, it was testing fine, but at, with the danger of Mother Shoto, I, I, was, I was too afraid to rely on Lopmon X to get me big enough to potentially be able to get over um, Mother, so we chose not to go that route. The other, the next choice was Red Hybrid. And um, the thing with Red Hybrid is a, as big of an Agumon and Tai fan as I've been from the beginning, um, Burning Greymon and Ancient Greymon, they're not Greymon. So I can't use Takuya. The, it, it, it wouldn't have worked. I would have probably gone like 1-3 and it would have been the same thing. I would have came home early that, yesterday. So then the last choice was Omni. If you know anything about me or if you don't, I'm going to tell you. I am a Greymon person. I've got the Agumon here made for me. I've got the Thai Digivice. I've got a mat that you're gonna see in a little bit. I, that Greymon Agumon is what I do. Agumon has been my boy since 1999, my favorite fictional character of all time. So the problem with running Omni is that I have to use another Digimon, a Digimon that I don't like. I don't like Matt. I don't like Gabumon, and I don't like any variant of Garurumon. So I did not want to play the deck. However, I knew that I wanted to win. So what I had to do, and you can see it on the Digivice, yesterday I was training Gabumon on here. Sorry for the focus, but I was training Gabumon, the power of friendship. I decided that we would try out uh, adding these Garurumon cards in and see if we could finally get a top. And Eight rounds later, we did just that. We got 16th place and we made it to nationals. Now, let me tell you about this deck list. Now, as we jump into the deck list, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. This is pretty much not my list. What happened was at Card Fest a couple weeks ago, Hip Stereo um, got top eight with this list. And as I said, I wanted to use a list that I knew could win. I saw that it won because he got top eight and I decided that I would pilot it. There are two cards different in my list. So all credit to Hipsterio. I will try and see if I can figure out how to credit them down below because this was not my deck list. Just going to say what it was. But let's get to it. I can still talk about the cards because Greymon's still my boy and the darn power of friendship. It worked. So uh, here goes the deck list. First up, four Coromon. You don't need me to tell you what this card does. This is probably the best red egg currently. Now, I am running just two Ukomon, and I'm going to be so honest with you, this card did not do a whole lot for me. I know the power of this card, I know what it should be able to do for me, but because I cut it down to two, I didn't see it all that often, even though I was trying to mull to get to it, I didn't see it all that often. 
Uh, when I did, I guess it did some stuff, um, but throughout eight rounds, it did not make as big of an impact as it probably should, and it's probably just because I cut it down to two. Also, while I'm thinking about it, how many times has this card hit a Davis and Ken? Have you ever experienced that? We'll move. We're going to talk about Imperial later. Trust me. Then we've got some more searchers. We've got three of the searcher Agumon that grabs the tamer that we so desperately need. And we've got one of this EX4 Gabumon, which is just an insane card. Even if it's not grabbing a piece, the fact that you're just going three into the deck and then organizing them and putting them back to the top is it's it's crazy deck knowledge and it goes really well with another card later in the list now we get to a bit of contention for me i have four three bt14 agumon we know this card is great we know what this card can do but the other agumon that's coming next i think might be more important but being able to free into our Greymon to pop a 10k uh, at that point when we promote it you're you're killing a 10k potentially on turn two if you've played down a tie also on like this we know how good this card is i may have to go down to two now the rookies that do the thing we have two of the agumon i know i put down the black one earlier but this just hurts we have three i, I played blue cards i i never pl played blue cards before but um these cards are both nuts now, the reason I think I want to go up to three of this Agumon is because of its start of main effect. Start of main, you promote this card and you can grab out of your trash whichever piece you're missing. You can grab back your Garu, your Metal Garurumon, you can grab back your Omni, you can grab back your War Greymon, and that is ridiculous. And drawing one is never a bad thing. Not to mention the potential need to use their inheritable, which is end of turn DNA. Now, in the other deck that we're going to talk about later, I've got a lot to say about that other deck that end of turn DNAs. But anyway, uh, unlike that deck, we don't really want to do that in this deck. We kind of want to save it, but in the event that we need to do it, because it happens all the time, uh, I think I want three of this Agumon next time I run the deck. Heading into our fully loaded stack of champions, you know, level fours. Oh, no, we only have four. Uh, and it's one of the most broken cards ever. This card is so insanely good. You don't need me to tell you what it does, but what I love doing is just trying to get it to die. Here, swing into security. I know you're boosted by 3K right now, but if you could die, that would be wonderful so I can play out my tamer for free. Or you can be cute and do this and then go into an Agumon and then go into another one and have two stacked on it. And then if it dies, then you get to play two things. This card is busted, broken, crazy, probably the best card in the deck, probably the best Greymon card that's been released since BT9, probably. No, BT12 War Greymon, not that great. Oh, uh, I said BT9, I forgot about Black War Grey. BT11, I think this is the best card for Greymon since BT11, and I'm gonna stick to it, unless I remember something else, then I'll not stick to it. Now, being that we're an Omni deck, obviously we've got four of the great, four of the War Greymon and four of the Metal Garurumon. Both of these cards are crazy nutso, especially, I can't believe I'm saying this, especially the Metal Garurumon. Okay, the ability, like this thing locking down a card is nuts. Now, I, I do have to admit, I probably don't utilize playing this card out and then warping into this as much as I should. Uh, most of the time, because I have more Agumons and Gabumons, you know, I'm playing the Metal Garuru and then I'm digivolving into the War Grey and using his delete effect, which doesn't hit things very often. When it does, it, it can you can blow up some boards if you get this 8K off. You get the Greymon off, you get the this you get the Greymon to delete, you get this 8K to delete, you get Omni to delete or to bottom deck and then delete, you get Omni to swing in the power of this deck is nuts, which just makes it even crazier that there's one deck that I think is so, so much better. We'll talk about it later. Last thing on these, obviously these inheritable, inheritables are nuts. Being able to win attacking trash and win attacking unsuspend when you're an Omni, um, there is a wild combo that is at the end of our Digimon here in a second. It, it's nuts. It's nuts. These cards are great. 
even this dumb blue guy, I guess. The other thing that I regret, and this one does kind of hurt just because, just because of what I've said, okay? I decided to run two secret war grays and one secret metal guru room. I'm going to say it. This was the wrong choice. Did it lose me a game? No, it, it sure did not lose me a game. However, um, this was the most clutch card for me yesterday by far. There was not another card in the deck that was more clutch than this metal guru room. Being able to lock down three guys, having evade, and your opponent forgetting that it has evade, and then when it swings, it unsuspends. Like, I get to pretend like I'm that other deck that we're going to talk about in a little bit for just a little bit. This card is crazy. Now, the reason I decided to run two of these Wargraves was because of Mother Shoto. I was afraid of Mother Shoto, and this card will let me, if I can combine it with a um, the Greymon, and the Agumon, and potentially one of my Tamers, I can get this guy up boosted at least to 17k easily. If I've got the right Tamer set up, I'm 19k, I'm probably hitting over Mother, uh, and I, I get the Security Plus, I get the Piercing. Uh, I mean, I think the card is nuts. However, I don't think Mother Shoto is as big of a problem as we all thought. Sure, it's around, and sure, it tops, but it's not as it's not as bad as people certainly thought it was going to be. The next time I run this deck, uh, we're certainly going to go um, two of this two of this card because uh, it's just crazy nutso. The man that needs no introduction. Actually, it does um, because my opponents don't know what this card does, and that's why I'm able to. That was that's why I was got top sixteen because my opponents did not know what this card did. If you need to know what these cards do, there are several websites that you can go look up to see what cards do. You don't need me to explain it, but I had to explain to almost every person I played yesterday what this card did. Bottom deck a level, kill something, and then I'm going to raid into you end of turn with my tamer. This card is crazy good. If it wasn't for one deck. Anyway, my favorite level 7 in the deck, though, is Alter B. This is where the crazy combo comes in. Let me see if I can set it up and show you. All right, imagine this with me, okay? You've started your turn, and you're able to Omni on your turn. Or Omni... You, you, Omni's here, okay? On your turn. You have your Omni and you get to say something, not you aced it and your opponent gets to say something, okay? You get to say something. And the words that come out of your mouth, let's say they have four security left. That's a lot of security. And I had a couple opponents yesterday that just passed with four security. And they were like, we're probably fine. And I was like, no, you're probably not. So what happens is I'm gonna swing with Omni, Omni's gonna trash a card and I'm gonna unsuspend. That's gonna be two checks. Now they're down to two cards. Do you know what's coming next? Even if I have no memory left, check this out. I go into Alter B. Okay, what Alter B says, uh, so when Digivolving, it D-Digivolves three and then it pops up. That's the worst thing about this card because it can potentially flip. Let's move on. So what this card says is at the end of this card, what this card says is at the end of turn, an Omni in name can attack. So end of attack or end of turn, I'm going to attack with Omnimon Alter B. When attacking, I'm going to trash three level six or higher cards. It doesn't matter that I overflow. I'm going to trash two of their security and I'm going to hit for game. This, as I said, was my favorite level seven in the deck. Now, part of me wants to skip even putting this in the video, but I did run one paladin mode and it didn't do a darn thing for me yesterday. It's in here for seven great demon lords. I didn't play any. I don't even know if it would be able to do well, but I was losing in that matchup the day before the tournament, so we decided to put this in. Will it stay in for now? I don't know. I don't know. My friend that plays seven great demon lords says that this card doesn't really do a whole lot against high level seven great demon lord players, so we need a different answer. We have four of the tie and the other guy. Uh, Ty and Matt, I guess after you top 16, you can have your name for a little bit. Uh, four of the Ty and Matt, just the card, this card is, just, is wonderful. And we've got two of the um, starter deck ties uh, to just set our memory. You know what I mean? Probably the best card in the deck, right, is going to be our option card, uh, Miraculous Mega Knight. 
Now, I would love this card, and I would say without a doubt it's the best card in our deck. If it wasn't for another option card that a different deck has being slightly better, we're going to talk about it in a little bit. If you check the channels out, or if you check the, um, what's it called? If you check the chapters out, you can see one of them with a different Digimon title. If you want to, if you want to talk more about this card, you can go to that one. Now, this card is just nuts because a lot of people are afraid to touch the level six, even though most of the time I'm just bluffing that I have another Metal Garurumon in my hand. Uh, please, please don't kill my Metal Guru Ramon, I, I, or my War Greymon, because I'm just going to save it. I, I don't have another one. I have Omni, but I haven't seen another Metal Guru Um But this card scares people more than it actually works against people. One of my favorite cards that didn't, too mu didn't do too much yesterday was Supreme Connection. Um, this card is really cool. It actually has a good security effect, unlike another one of the option cards that is in our deck. Um, but this security effect and its main effect say that we can order the top five cards of the deck. Yes, we can grab a cyborg and a machine. You can grab your Metal Garurumon. That's not what it's about. That's just, uh, sure, great, give me that. But the reason I love this card is because I can order the top five cards of my deck for what, whichever of those pieces that I need. Also, when it comes time to delay this, if I have this set up, it's the, this card is the, car, is the way that I win that dumb matchup against the other deck and I didn't see it in the in those matches. Lastly, the most fun card to play is the Fireball. Oh my goodness, how many times did I open this, flip over the Koro, just play Fireball? It's fine, I'll get out of it. There were even a couple games that I drew all three of them in the first two turns, and you bet I played every single one of them. Now, the one time that a Vmon swung in and hit this in my first check, oh my goodness, I wanted to shake that guy's hand. Anyway. Uh, I love this card. So that's our deck profile. The guys did it. And again, I'm a little surprised that this little blue dog that I've hated for so long was able to show up. Metal Garurumon was actually showing up so much more consistently than War Greymon was. I kept having to search for him. I kept having to put down the option card and search with the little, the, the one searcher that I have that can grab what I need. Uh, but Metal Garurumon was always there. It's, it, it was a very, very odd experience. And somehow, it was the most fun deck that I've played with in a long, long time. Now, let's talk about the matchups of yesterday. We played eight rounds. The first round was against D-Brigade. And I'm going to be honest, if my opponent knew what his cards did a little better, that match might have gone a little different. I was just able to navigate through it, just, just playing the deck, playing my deck at just doing what my deck does, was able to win that in a, in a 2-0, but it was fun games. Then I went against Blue Base Armor Magna X. Now, most people, when they hear Magna X, it's like, oh, oh no, oh no, not me. I am so not afraid of that card because I have these guys. And these guys say, your Digimon cannot suspend. That means he cannot unsuspend. That means he does not get his immunity. Now, both of the people that I played with Magna X yesterday were able to proc it. There was a Blinding Ray here. There was a Jessmon GX there. They were, they were able to get past what I was doing, but it wasn't enough to give me that one more turn I needed to then bottom deck their Magna X with an Omni. And then I just go crazy. Now, I think if it had been yellow base Magna X, that would have been different because they would have had much easier ways to recover their security, which would then activate it. But blue base Magna X, I don't think does very well against Omni. Now, in the third round, I played against Imperial Dramon, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. The fourth round was another Magna X. Uh, and um, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was fun games. I learned what the promo Flame Dramon does which is like raid, trash your security. Oh, that's what, that was one that happened. Raid, uh, grab your own security card to your hand. Great, now my Magna X is active. Wild. Should I have known that beforehand? That doesn't matter. I got top 16, you didn't. Um, <laughs> but uh, that Flame Dramon was crazy. That match was really fun. Now, round six, I went against uh, Angels, which uh, we, got, we got to pause for just a second. When you're in a regionals tournament, 
you have to understand how the game flow works. You have to understand the phases of the, of, of the game and understand that when you move from one phase to the next phase, you cannot go back to that last phase, especially if the new phase is your opponent doing something. So when you say, I attack, and I say, do you have any win attacking effects? And you say, no. I say, great. Thinking on counter phase. That is my turn. I am now the one that gets to decide if I'm about to if I'm about to bottom deck all of your all of your guys. You cannot say, oh, but you get 10 seconds later, you can't say, oh, actually, I'm gonna do this when attacking. If it's a mandatory thing, that's different. If it's an optional thing, you said no, it is now my phase. You don't get to go back and do that again. Now, that being said, these games against the Angels player was really fun, and I hope that me and this person can become friends over time, um, but you gotta understand game flow. Now, Angels, when they see this card, I think the this Dominion deck, that's awesome, that whooped my butt playing Agubon, by the way, uh, I think this card just completely destroys it. So here's what I did. I went into this card and tried to delete something. They saved it. I say, great, cool, awesome. I hard play this card. I warp into this card on top of this, right? Because I'm, I'm an Agumon, right? Uh, and I'm going to delete the thing that I tried to delete again. Oh, you're going to save that? Cool, great. Well, end of turn, I'm going to Jogress. Okay, and now I'm going to bottom deck. You have two Dominimon? Great, bottom deck both of them. Oh, you're going to save both of them. Cool, great. Um, so now I'm going to delete one of them. Oh, you, you saved it again. Okay, you have no security left. And, I, and now I'm going to raid into one of them. Oh, you've got, a, you've got a, an ace under there. So now it's your turn at one. And there's, there's nothing you can do at that point. So I don't think Angels does very well against Omni. Round seven, I went against another Imperial Dramon. And don't worry, we're almost there. Last round went up against a Lilith X. And I think at that point, my deck had just decided that we were going to win um, cause I, it, 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 I, I just had everything real quick and I, I, it was fun, but I'm gonna be very honest. I still don't quite know what Lilith X does. I didn't see the card, uh, but we were able to get through that for a six to 16th place finish. Now we need to talk now that I have played for a while, a, a deck that does Jogress, a deck that does end of turn Jogress a deck that plays option cards, a deck that plays dual tamers option cards, obviously talking about this option card, my option card, as I call it, the Miraculous Mega Knight. I think I have a, even more understanding of how broken and overtuned of a deck Imperial Dramon is. And I need to talk about it for, for just a couple minutes, okay? Bear with me. First off, the level threes. You have multiple level threes that search anything you need. Okay, when I play this card, I can grab a Greymon Omnimon and a tie. That's great. However, how many times am I bottom decking my Metal Garurumons? All the time is the answer. All the time is the answer. I'm bottom decking my Metal Garurumons. Okay, I play this card and this card, I actually have not been playing it like I need to. I shouldn't be saying that in my top 16 video, but uh, I haven't played it like I need to because you can grab a Garurumon and an Agumon, Greymon, Omnimon. That's, a, that's pretty solid. It's only a one of? Question mark? But tell me why there are multiple searchers in the deck that grab the same things. It, the rookies in Imperial Dramon are not the problem. Let's keep going. They have level fours. Well, they have rookies that reduce cost to go into the level fours, okay? Uh, and then the level fours gain a memory when you DNA them together. Wh why do they need all of that? I'm already noticing some difference here. Now, you can, your argument is valid. When you play one of these, you can digivolve into one of these for free. You're so right. This card says delete an 8K Digimon. This card says one of your opponent's Digimon can't suspend. Their level fives say... Suspend your board and then doesn't uh, suspend your Digimon. They don't unsuspend next turn. And then their level five say, 
swing uh, unsuspend. Also, I have jamming and piercing, by the way. Like, it's just too much. Now, in the event that somehow you're able to kill one of those level fives, it pops out two level fours. It, it's so, it, it's too much, and we haven't even gotten to the biggest problem. If this was all we had, I think I'd be okay. But there's more. There's level sixes in the deck that basically say you can't play. Dragon Mode says, if you do anything cool, anything that's probably in your game plan, I'm gonna Digivolve on your turn and bottom deck your cards probably. What? Now, yes, that, is, that card is probably the biggest problem for Omni. I can't ace over one of these guys because if I do, then they get to pop their Dragon Mode. The Dragon Mode goes first because they're the turn player. I have to Omni on my turn, which does make it very hard. Again, that Dragon Mode is what makes the, this matchup very difficult, but it's not what makes Imperial Dramon as stupid as I'm, about to, as I'm about to go into. There's a new level seven in the deck that doesn't really do a lot on my turn when I attack, if they ace into it, um, but that, that's the least of the concern. Davis and Ken is by far the best Tamer card in the game right now. Even if you clear their board, which I, I've been brainstorming today how I can figure out this matchup and I can figure out how to clear their board and it's really not too hard to do with my deck, assuming that I have my option cards, uh, I have my option card down. As long as I have this down, uh, I should be able to clear their board. However, with their Davis and Ken, they play out a rookie, they search for the cards they need, boom, 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 boom. Here's another Pyodramon, um, and it suspends my Omnimon blocker, and, and it, it just goes again. That is by far the best Tamer card in the game right now. This card doesn't compare to that. It gains a memory when I evolve into uh, a, a Greymon or Garurumon, or when I evolve at all, if I have a Greymon, Garurumon, it, like... Uh, and then end of turn, Omni can attack a player. It's great, don't get me wrong, but Davis and Ken is so much, so much better. Now I'm starting to I'm starting to stutter because I'm getting to this next card. Return to the primogenitor. I'm gonna say it in this deck. Hear me out. In this deck, this is the best card ever. Now it's not the best card ever. Okay, you've got cards like HPD. You can put that in multiple decks. Also, why does Imperial Dramon get, have to play HPD? Why does it get to play both of these? Anyway, I love HPD. But Return to the Primogenitor is the most overtuned, broken card in a deck that this game has ever seen. I'm pretty confident to say that. Main Digivolve into a level five or higher with free trait reduced by four. You do that for two. Why do we need more reducing? Okay, let's move on. That's not what I have the problem with yet. It kind of is, but it's not really. All turns, when one of your Digimon with free trade will be deleted, uh, you can, you know, you can save and you can Digivolve, okay? That's annoying, but I can't complain yet because I have a card that does the same thing. I'm, I'm with it for now. I'm with it for now. But the security effect is what does it for me. The security effect you play out your freaking Davis and Ken, and then you add it to the battle area. You know what? I know the card will be up on the screen because I'm going to take some time. The card should be up on the screen. My option card doesn't do that. My option card says add card to hand. Why? Why? What would be wrong with? No, I don't, I don't want this to play. To the, I don't want it. I want it in my hand. Okay, I want their card to go to their hand. I understand they can't use it the turn that you hit it in security. I don't care. They can use it. They get their Davis and Ken, which means they can go into it and immediately take use of it on their turn if they have to, which means if I have to Omni on their turn, it's so overtuned. It's so broken. And this is coming from a Saris Mom player that used to use HPD. Okay. This comes from a War Gray X player who used to swing five checks, 20K Omni for game. Return to the Primogenitor is by far the best card in its deck 
that the game has ever seen. That's all the rant that I have. Thank you for making it this far in the video. I do have some shout outs. First of all, shout out to God. Shout out to Jesus. It has been a tough summer, but this weekend was just a wonderful win. And I, I'm so thankful. And I'm hoping that this is the turnaround um, that I've been praying for. Next, shout out to my biggest support. I, I don't think I bounce back from my losses if it's not for that person. Shout out to my group of friends. We are not a Digimon team. We're a group of friends and NFD and oh my gosh, we went crazy. Maisa got eighth place, got his invite, got an Omnimon. I got 16th place, I got my invite. Ryan got 17th, he's already won a regional, he's just a goat. Um, Prismatic got 18th and got hand, probably is getting handed down an invite. That's awesome. Kevin got top 32 and it, with some things would have gone differently. He probably would have placed much higher. NFD is crazy. After our last regional, we did not do all that great, but we said, hey, we need to get practicing. We need to do better. And two weeks later, we just destroyed. I mean, we did so good. NFD is taking team challenges, challenges if you want to. Anyway, uh, lastly, shout out to Dash and Sean. Thank you for the help getting these last couple cards that I needed and for the input on the deck because it definitely helped me out in running uh, in, in how I did yesterday. And that's it. Thank you so much for, well, so much for listening to me rant about Imperial Dramon. Again, my name is Domino. If you like anything Pokemon related, please check out the channel. We've got a Pokemon Y randomizer, which should be coming back sometime soon. Um, and we do, uh, we've got a lot of plans for stuff leading up to Legends Arceus next year. Thanks again for checking out the video. We'll see you in a Pokemon video, or we'll see you in maybe a video about Nats. We'll see you then. Be blessed.